Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 21st of October. Residents in Indian capital battle air pollution amid pandemic. Pakistan unlikely to exit grey list as FATF meet begins. And former Afghan warlord says US defeated in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. Pollution accompanied by the coronavirus pandemic is giving a tough time to residents of Indian capital New Delhi who are finding it difficult to breathe amid deteriorating air quality. The Delhi government has deployed over 2,000 environment marshals across the city to generate awareness about its anti-pollution campaign to curb vehicular pollution. With winter approaching and stubble being burnt in neighbouring states of Haryana and Punjab, air quality in Indian capital New Delhi has started to plummet, making life difficult for its residents who are already dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. An awareness campaign named Red Light On, Gari Off, Red Light On, Ignition Off, launched by Chief Minister of New Delhi Arvind Kejriwal, began on Wednesday where people were encouraged to turn off their car's engine while waiting at red light signals to fight pollution in the city. After months of relatively clean air because of a lockdown imposed to fight the virus, pollution levels have spiked to their worst in two years for October. एक पोल्यूशन है दोनों सेम है लंग्स पे ही इफेक्ट कर रहे हैं तो दिल्ली में बहुत सारा भी पोल्यूशन है बाकी अभी इतना ज्यादा इससे बहुत ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम इतनी हो रही है हमारे घर से भी नहीं निकला जाता बाहर और भी मेरे मेरे खुद के एक तो प्रॉब्लम हो गई है डस्ट एलर्जी की मतलब बाहर जाते तो सांस नहीं ली जाती इंडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी ऑन ट्यूसडे अपीलड टू सिटीजंस दैट दे शुड नॉट बी केयरलेस इन द फाइट अगेंस्ट कोविड-19 टिल अ प्रॉपर वैक्सीन इज अवेलेबल इन द कंट्री he said as the festive season is approaching with celebrations for the Hindu festivals of Durga Puja and Diwali due this month and in mid-November, there is a greater need to be careful in fighting against the pandemic. India has recorded 7,597,063 confirmed COVID-19 cases, including 115,197 deaths so far. There are 740,090 active cases of coronavirus infection in the country, which comprises 9.67% of the total case load. The Indian Army has handed over the Chinese soldier to the People's Liberation Army at Chusul Moldo border personal meeting point after completion of all formalities. The Chinese soldier was apprehended in the Demchok sector of eastern Ladakh on Monday after he had strayed across the line of actual control. India on Wednesday released the Chinese soldier who was apprehended after he inadvertently crossed over into Indian territory in the Demchok sector of eastern Ladakh on Monday. The soldier Corporal Wang Ya Long, an armorer in the PLA People's Liberation Army, was handed over to China at the Chushul Moldo border personnel meeting point after completion of all formalities as per established protocols, reports said. Hu Shijin, the editor-in-chief of the state-backed Global Times, also confirmed the soldier's return, saying the move brings an optimistic message to the tense China-India border. The release of the soldier comes amid turbulent diplomatic ties between New Delhi and Beijing, over the months-long standoff along the line of control. The two sides have held seven military-to-military -military talks to resolve the impasse along the Himalayan borders, even as an eighth round is expected to take place this week. 
The three-day virtual plenary meeting of Terra Funding Watchdog, the Financial Action Task Force, began on Wednesday to decide the next course of action against Pakistan with regard to the steps taken to crack down on terror funding. Pakistan was put on the grey list or monitoring list in 2018 for not doing enough on terror funding. The Global Watchdog for Money Laundering and Terror Financing FATF Financial Action Task Force will begin its three-day virtual plenary meeting on Wednesday, during which it is scheduled to take the final call on Pakistan's continuation on its grey list. FATF had placed Pakistan in its grey list in June 2018 and asked it to implement a 27-point action plan to curb terror financing and money laundering by the end of 2019. The deadline was, however, extended later in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic. Pakistan has so far delivered on 21 points of the 27 obligations, but has failed to clear some of the key tasks. The mandates which Pakistan has failed include action against all UN-designated terrorists like jaish e mohammed Chief Masood Azhar, Lashkar-e Taiba founder Hafiz Mohammed Saeed and the outfit's operational commander Zakiur Rahman Lakhvi. If Pakistan continues to be in the grey list, it will be difficult for the country to get financial aid, thus further enhancing problems for the nation which is in a precarious financial situation. Moving on, political activists in Pakistan administered Kashmir have continued to oppose Pakistan's plan to alter the status of Gilgit Baltistan and turn the illegally occupied region into its fifth province. There is resentment against the arbitrary decision which is in violation of UN resolutions. Political activists in Pakistan administered Kashmir, Sardar Sagir Khan, has opposed Pakistan's plan to alter the status of Gilgit Baldistan and turn the illegally occupied region into its fifth province that Islamabad aims to illegally subsume the region and create divisions. Protests have continued across Pakistan-administered Kashmir and Gilgit Baldistan, expressing anger against the arbitrary decision in violation of UN resolutions and the denial of fundamental rights to the common public. India has also lodged a strong protest against the Pakistan government stating that Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, including Gilgit Baldistan, are an integral part of India. Activists have expressed concern that China has been lobbying Pakistan to bring the illegally occupied region under its legal jurisdiction to protect its investment in Gilgit Baldistan, which are part of the China-Pakistan economic corridor. Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, the leader of Afghanistan's Hizbe Islami party on Tuesday, said that United States has been defeated in Afghanistan and Washington has no choice except to leave the country. He made the remarks during his three-day Islamabad visit where he discussed the Afghan peace process and bilateral ties with top Pakistani leadership. Leader of Afghanistan's hizb e islami party Gulbuddin Hekmatyar on Tuesday during his three-day Pakistan visit said, The United States has been defeated in Afghanistan and Washington has no choice except to leave the country. While speaking to reporters in Islamabad, the Afghan warlord said, The current talks in Doha between the team of Afghan presidential palace and the Taliban cannot be called intra-Afghan talks because there is no presence of Afghan political parties. Hekmatyar on Tuesday met top Pakistani leadership including Prime Minister Imran Khan and discussed the Afghan peace process and issues of bilateral interest. According to reports, during the meeting, PM Imran Khan described the talks in Doha as a historic chance for peace and warned against the damaging role of spoilers within and outside Afghanistan. Afghanistan and its international allies for years have accused Pakistan of backing Taliban as a way to limit the influence of old rival India in Afghanistan and the country is seen vital for success of peace talks as it enjoys leverage with the insurgent group. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's Supreme Court has said that four clauses of the proposed 20th Amendment to the Constitution 
need a public referendum to be approved as they are against the people's sovereignty. Parliament Speaker Mahinda Yapa Abir Vardena on Tuesday announced the top court's determination that the amendment requires a special majority to be passed. The previous 19 amendment empowered the parliament and the prime minister, while the 20th amendment aims to restore full executive powers to President Gotabaya Rajpaksa. Discussion on the proposed amendment began on Wednesday in the parliament and was scheduled to continue on Thursday before a vote on it. Moving on to news from Nepal. An octogenarian from Nepal started making kites when he was a teenager. He is still fascinated with kites and loves making them for others. During coronavirus lockdown, when people had to stay indoors, he created new designs of kites primarily to kill time. But now, he is making kites using locally produced Nepali kagats to promote the local culture. Purna Bahadur Shrestha started making kites since he was a teenager and he has remained afloat till now, though he has turned 83. He made numerous types of kites, big, small, over the years using various materials, but now he's focusing more on artistic or design kites made of Nepali kagas or Lokta papers to promote the Nepali culture and local produce. Lokta papers are yellowish in color and are mostly handmade. It is also costly when compared to the regular paper. Despite making kites featuring gods, goddesses and deities, Shrestha hasn't received any sort of criticism for using them. Instead, he has been applauded for bringing on the designs in kite surf. <laughs> Ever since the coronavirus lockdown imposed in March restricted people to stay indoors, Shrestha, in collaboration with his daughter, created a dozen of new designs of kites. He makes kites these days primarily to kill time and divert the stress created during the long stay at home. According to local legends, Kites are flown to send messages of gratitude to the celestial deities, especially the rain god Indra, for showering ample rain during the monsoon to ensure a good harvest season. In Nepal, when colorful kites dot the skies, it is a sign that the Sheen festival has arrived. Authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir organized a golf tournament in Pahalgam town this past weekend, which attracted enthusiasts from across the Union territory. The event aimed to revive tourism in the Kashmir Valley, which has been hit hard due to coronavirus pandemic. With an aim to boost golf tourism, authorities in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir organized a golf tournament in picturesque Pahalgam town this past weekend. The tournament held at Pahalgam Golf Course was part of a two-day autumn festival organized by the Jammu and Kashmir Tourism Department and attracted golf enthusiasts from across the Union territory. The coronavirus pandemic has restricted people to their homes and most of them are avoiding traveling due to the fear of contracting the disease. This has brought huge losses to Kashmir's tourism industry. The festival is this is an invitation. It is an invitation to tourists and to people from all over the country and all over the world to come and visit Jammu and Kashmir. Come and visit our beautiful valley. Come and visit this beautiful Pahalgam. Tourism is an important industry for Kashmir, contributing about 7% of the region's gross domestic product. The Kashmir Valley has been a popular destination among tourists from across the world who are drawn to its Himalayan summits and tracks along with picturesque valleys and lakes. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन